वंस अगैन डेली इन द न्यूज वंस अगैन फॉर द सेम न्यूज विंटर टाइम सिवियर एयर पोल्यूशन क्लीन एयर मीन्स द स्कोर इन एक यू आई नीड्स टू बी लेस देन फिफ्टी बट डेली विंटर्स रीड सिक्स हंड्रेड प्लस आई नो समाइम्स इवन एट हंड्रेड बट इज विंटर द मेन कल्पिट और एस फेब्रुवरी टू ऑगस्ट इज डर्टी बट एटलीस्ट लिवेबल बिकॉज मॉनसून रिंसेस एंड विंड फ्लशेज द बैड एयर बट अक्टोबर टू जनवरी टर्न ऑक्सिक बिकॉज विंटर ट्रैप्स इट बट वाई विंटर डेलीज लोकेशन far from the seas land locked delhi lacks a strong breeze that can push away the pollutants if it was in the coast like mumbai or chennai it could have had a strong breeze and could have been less polluted but unfortunately not what is the wind speed that is needed to push away the pollutants and what is delhi's wind speed on average to flush a dirty city you need at least 12 to 15 km per hour winds and delhi averages somewhere around 7 to 8 and in winter just 2 to 3 no way the pollutants can be flushed out it gets trapped but there are other land locked cities too like bangalore and hyderabad they don't get polluted as much as delhi because of the topography and the amount of rain see delhi sits in a low basin in the gangetic plains it's got weak winds and on top of it temperature inversion which acts like a lid on the city but bangalore hyderabad they sit higher get more rain and have more tree cover so pollutants get flushed away by air or washed away by rain or naturally filtered by trees but delhi delhi low wind speed less rain and least number of trees so that is why it becomes a pollution trapped bowl but i feel pity for delhi almost every other city's air gets cleaned up by nature itself one or the other way but delhi has no help exactly nature helps bangalore and hyderabad so that is why their aqi is 80 to 90 but it doesn't help delhi and so it stays high i understand delhi's geography makes it very vulnerable to air pollution you explained why it remains polluted but tell me what makes it polluted what pollutes it without a doubt the major cause vehicles they have the highest contribution 30 to 40% next industries coal based power plants mainly 15 to 20% construction activities 15% stubble burning 5 to 10% stubble burning just 5 to 10% yes if you take for the entire year but you know in which season delhi is the most vulnerable winter and in winter the major cause of pollution is stubble burning without a doubt it contributes about 40 to 45% alone to delhi's bad air that is why aqi shoots up to unbreathable 800 Stubble burning is not some centuries old practice. It's a very recent phenomenon, only from 25 years and very high since the last 10 years. From 90s to 2000, we had very minimal farm fires. But post that, it gradually picked up from 2000s. Now observe how AQI starts to shoot up slowly and see how it became rampant from 2050. How it's worse in the air. You get it how? Indeed. See, I'm never ruling out vehicles and industries role. They are the major contributors. The emission from them has to be brought down if Delhi wants to breathe clean. but it can't happen overnight if vehicle and industrial emissions are brought down delhi's air can easily be brought down to 50 to the cleanest levels and that happened in the 2020 lockdown you see january it was about 250 during the lockdown vehicles off the road factories shut while covid picked up it fell so low to 45 yeah but you cannot bag engine vehicles and shut factories overnight because the economy still depends on them right old diesel trucks and buses are the biggest polluters but you cannot bang them suddenly because they carry the essentials they needed for daily lives coal plants can't be shut suddenly delhi will run out of power so what can we do phase them out slowly so they don't exist in the next 10 years and by the time we also would have found an alternative i get it but what is the one we can solve immediately immediately which will get immediate results what is the one that worsens the air to the worst in winter stubble burning exactly and that is the one we can work on for some visible relief the next winter <sighs> okay let's get into this first of all why do they burn is that a joke delhi no the farmers of punjab mostly grow rice and wheat from june to october monsoon plenty of water available rice season and from november to april cold season perfect to grow wheat buy only wheat and rice because they have msp for it means if nobody buys at least the government buys so they have a guarantee that it will definitely be sold that is why they grow oh June to October they grow rice. The rice harvest ends in October. Then winter starts. They have to start sowing wheat immediately. There's only just 15 or 20 days between the end of rice harvest and the starting of the wheat seed sowing. Yes, 15 days is not enough time. But there's a problem here. When rice is harvested, it is usually with the combined harvester machine. The machine cuts only the grain head and leaves behind two parts of residue. One is 10 to 15 cm tall stubble and the other is the loose straw. the upper parts of the plant thrown away to the ground the soil gets fully covered with a thick carpet like loose straws and stubbles until you clear this carpet like straw layer you cannot drill through the soil and put the seed in you have to clear the straws and stuff and remember there is only 15 to 20 days to do this not much time what are the ways to clear them one manually through labor two use machines to clear them three burn them 
how much does each cost? To do it manually through labor, it costs anywhere around 9,000 to 15,000 rupees per hectare. You use a machine, it costs about 2,500 to 3,000 rupees. But burning? Just a bit of petrol or diesel and a matchstick. Hardly 200 rupees. No wonder the farmers choose to burn. So yes, because burning costs the lowest and clears the field of stubble the fastest, they choose to burn. How much land is under paddy? How much stubble and straws does it leave? Punjab alone, 3 million hectares and per hectare leaves 9 to 10 tons. So the entire 3 million hectares leaves 25 to 30 million tons of residues to be cleared. Equivalent to 150,000 trucks full of residue. 150,000 trucks. 150,000 trucks full of residue. We got 25 million tons. Punjab alone. Haryana? Haryana too does burn but not as much as Punjab. In the total stubble burning emissions, Haryana and Western UP contribute just 25 to 30%. But Punjab alone, 70 to 75 percent. But how do the pollutants travel to Delhi from Punjab as if there was a Gatkari built highway in the sky? <laughs> Again, the worst timing for Delhi, unfortunately. Winter time, winds blow from the northwest direction, directly from Punjab Haryana to Delhi at 20 kilometers per hour. That's how the stubble burnt air pollutant particles travel to Delhi in the sky highway. Oh my god. How much of what does burning all that stubble emit? 1,50,000 tons of particulate matter, 9 lakh tons of carbon monoxide and 60,000 tons of nitrogen oxides. That's the biggest export of Punjab to Delhi, which Delhi pays through with the AQI of 800. Exactly. So, the farmers are the villains. See, it's totally wrong to call them the villains. You need to understand that they are helplessly trapped in the system. But there's an entire city with a population of two crores literally struggling to breathe. At least for their sake, shouldn't the farmers stop burning? You cannot expect them to do that. It is their bread and butter. If they don't do that, they cannot survive. Isn't there a solution for this at all? There is one. Absolutely. Is it? Really? Is it? Yes. Yes. There is a hero who can save Delhi. Don't say that some political leader and only voting into power will solve this. <laughs> Not at all. Our hero is not a human, but a machine. What machine? The super straw management system and the happy cedar. What does it do? See, farmers use a machine called a combined harvester to cut and thresh the paddy from the plant. And that is how you get the rice. And when it cuts, as I said earlier, it leaves behind the chopped stems, the loose straws. Yes, the loose straws in the soil itself. And these loose straws are very thick like you see here and also unevenly spread. The loose straw layer itself is about 12 to 15 centimeter thick. Okay, so this is what makes it tough to drill through them and sow the seeds. Exactly. So here the challenge is to cut them finely, make them thin and spread it evenly. If they're made thin and spread evenly, layer brought down to 2 to 3 centimeters. Problem solved. Drilling through the soil and sowing the seed becomes very easy. And this is what the super straw management system, the SMS, does. It just has to be attached with a combined harvester machine. When the combined harvester is cutting the paddy, the SMS in the behind cuts the straws finely to 2 to 3 centimeters and spreads it evenly, bringing down the layer thickness from 15 centimeters to just 2 to 3 centimeters. And the next step, the happy cedar machine drills through this layer and 5 centimeter into the soil easily and sows the wheat seed. Straw is evened out, seed is drilled. What about the stubble? That's cut by the happy cedar itself. How? Oh, but uh, isn't it supposed to just make a slit in the soil and put the seed there? But it has got a rotary blade in the front. It cuts off the stubble. But that is left on the field itself, right? Let that be left. Only if it's standing upright rooted, it's an obstruction. If it's fallen in the soil, then it's actually good for the soil. Because it decomposes and enriches the soil. But farmers wanted the stubble and straw to be cleared off, right? Not necessarily. They want to somehow plant the wheat seeds. If it's still possible with the stubble in the soil, they will still go ahead. Only if it's an obstruction, they'll try to clear it off by burning. And using the SMS and Happy Cedar is only more advantageous for the farmers. How? If the residue lies in the ground like a thick carpet for a long time, it will retain moisture, fungal growth, entire field rots. Oh. But instead, if the straw and stubble residue is flattened, it won't retain moisture. No rot. Instead, its decomposition will enrich soil more with nutrients. Okay, this is what you call mulch. Exactly. Organically enriching the soil instead of using fertilizers. It will only fetch more profits for the farmers. I mean, this is a one-stop solution for every problem. But why the heck are the farmers not using them? Cost how much? To retrofit an SMS to a combine, it costs one and a half lakh. And to buy a new combine with inbuilt SMS, it's 25 lakhs. Then it's out of reach for 80% of the farmers. Exactly. And not just the cost, it is also slower compared to burning. 
मशीन टेक्स फाइव टू सिक्स डेज टू लेवल द रेसिड्यूज बर्निंग Half a day is enough. Also, machine consumes more diesel, so they have to spend extra on diesel as well. And hence, the helpless farmers resort to burn. Yeah, how do we help the helpless? Only if they're helped to use a machine instead of matchstick will the people in Delhi be able to breathe. I understand everything: the cost, diesel, that's discouraging them. But what can be done, or what needs to be done? Before we try to understand what needs to be done, we need to understand what has been done so far and why it hasn't fully worked. Yes, please. In 2018, the central government launched a crop residue management scheme to end stubble burning. Uh, yes, kind of. What did they do? So it's costly to retrofit SMSs, right? So government gave 50% subsidy to the farmers. If it costed one and a half lakh, farmers needed to pay just 75,000 rupees to buy them. Yes. But you see here, there is no point in them buying or retrofitting an SMS for the whole year. They need it only for those 15 days where they have to clear the residue, right? They only need it at that transition time from rice harvest to wheat sowing hmm? right there is no point in farmer buying them so that is why instead of buying they can rent them from whom from the chcs the custom hiring centers so who are the chcs they provide farm machines for rent and how they get it through government's 80% subsidy so suppose a happy seeder costs 1 and 1/2 lakh government pays 80% of it that is 1.2 lakhs the rest the chc owner has got to pay just 30000 rupees to get them. so 1.5 lakh machine he just gets it by paying 30000 rupees and now he can rent it to the farmer for just 800 rupees per hectare chcs get this machine for cheap and rent it out to the farmers for cheap this way even small farmers can use the machine instead of burning wow such a brilliant move even after this scheme why are they still burning shortage in that 15 day window one chc can service only up to 8 to 10 farmers but the overall requirement is for 25 to 30 farmers why because there are shortage of machines and chcs is there and chcs are not even available in many districts so what needs to be done here is one chc available every five villages so it covers entire punjab and haryana like making chcs as much available for farmers as ration shops to people indeed and another big reason why farmers don't use sms is despite all the subsidies is they have to bear the extra diesel cost to run the machines exactly you see burning a hectare of land cost them hardly 300 to 500 rupees but renting from chc along with the diesel cost 1300 to 1500 rupees only if you bring that cost down they will use machine or else for them burning would still be their first choice and how do we bring that down subsidy again yes subsidy for the right thing which is the wrong thing here giving 50% subsidy to buy the sms is practically useless why because it sits idle for the entire year except for those 15 days so instead of the 50% subsidy for them to buy offer subsidy to use the machine subsidy for the diesel cost how currently it costs 1300 to 1500 per hectare now give them 800 rupees subsidy per hectare to farmers who have used sms and happy seeder diesel 200 rupees subsidy so 800 plus 200 1000 rupees subsidy for the farmers who used machines instead of burning automatically cost comes down to 300 to 500 rupees for them cost problem solved on one side we have made chcs and machines available in those 15 day period and on another side we have brought down the cost but uh, it's still the same as the cost to burn right good question now make burning costly for them heavy penalties for those who burn how do we find out the culprits through the satellites remote sensing center punjab incentivize machine usage through subsidies and discourage burning through strict enforcement of penalties but subsidies big cost for government total land under paddy in punjab is 30 lakh hectares per hectare 1000 rupees subsidy do the math 3000 crores per year and that's not even 15% of the lotli banana budget but unfortunately this less than 50% doesn't win them votes but that lotli banana will definitely win one <laughs> i know so by just spending 3000 crores delhi's aqi which is unmanageable in the winter can be brought down to 250 to 300 but still it is poor of course but at least gives a little instant visible relief i understand vehicles and industries are the biggest polluters but they cannot ban them and shut them overnight example you take vehicular pollution you need to retire old vehicles switch to evs and expand public transport 5 to 10 years of work industrial pollution relocation fuel change emission retrofit high cost takes time you see none of them gives results in one winter but ending crop fires can give instant visible results if delhi wants to beat better the next winter stubble burning is the only lever that can move aqi within weeks it's not the biggest share year round we all agree but to make delhi air clean throughout the year pollution from vehicles industries construction sites and garbage must be curbed even if it takes years if delhi has to breathe we'll see that in another video detailedly how delhi can practically bring down vehicular and industrial pollution until then wear a mask and stay safe